mummies have been scanned in hospital scanners and what we have on the screen in front of us is the raw data from the CT scans. What a scanner does is rotates around the body very rapidly, bombards the body with x-rays from all directions. That's as good as you can get really from mummies. <coughs> yeah, nice. Wow. We're very fortunate that for some of the mummies, we've used the latest generation of CT scanners, which uh, uses two types of x-rays at any one time. You're being able to see uh, through the thicker parts, such as bone, and the thinner parts, uh, the more delicate parts, which are also very, very revealing. And this is why we're able to reconstruct these and create 3D models. When we get the data back from the hospital, it actually comes in the form of thousands of slices, and these slices allow you to carefully explore each mummy to try and find evidence of biological variations, evidence of ill health, evidence of disease, but also evidence of how the body was prepared by the embalmers. The first mummy that we're looking at is that of a man uh, found at Thebes, modern Luxor. He lived about 600 BC. We've been able to discover a lot of information about his life and death. In this view we have here, you can see the entire chest cavity has been filled with this, this packing material after the organs have been removed. It looks quite dense, um, but it's also quite granular, so it could be partially sand, maybe mixed with some spices. Um, sometimes lichen was used as well. We're looking here at the, the bone of the skull. Inside, the skull is almost totally empty, just a little portion of the brain remaining, uh, less dense than bone, but maybe a little bit more dense than the the linen wrappings. There's something of a medium density actually inside the nose and we think the embalmer has packed the nose with something, maybe cloth, to help it to keep its shape otherwise it would be flattened when the mummy was wrapped. One of the things we can do is compress all the slides and transform them into a 3D model. We refer to this as visualization because it's based on the hard data that was gathered. The only thing that's artificial is that we're applying artificial colors because we don't know what's underneath the wrappings. The first time I saw how much dental disease there was in this individual, I was really, really surprised. At least four, possibly five abscesses which appeared to be active at the time of death. I was impressed that actually this person managed to survive with that much discomfort. One of the front incisors over here and the two low incisors in the center over here. The bone has retreated away from the roots. You've got these hollowed out areas and this is typical evidence for dental abscess. It would have affected his face by being quite swollen. If the infection had penetrated into the blood, it could lead to septicemia. It could have been the cause of death. Quite interesting, you can see a very thin tracery of possibly some kind of string there or mm. thread, which must be part of the inner wrappings. Every time we look at this data again, we nearly always spot something that we hadn't seen before, because it's so versatile. Really, there is a kind of almost inexhaustible supply of data there that we are tapping into every time we look again. This is the object that we saw in the original raw CT scan data. Because the mummy is still completely wrapped up, we can be absolutely sure um, that this is part of the embalmer's tool that he was using to remove the brain through the nose. It's very rare indeed to actually find one. So to see that there inside the skull is really amazing. It looks as though in this case that the tool must have broken. It's exactly the kind of Thing that you hope you're going to find when you look inside a mummy. Uh, we've never seen anything like that before. Uh, there can't be any real doubt as to what it is. In a way, this is the, the smoking gun. This is the evidence that shows you exactly how they were removing the brain. So we begin with the mummy case and then that will gradually dissolve away to show the 
wrapped body inside and you can see the actual texture of the cloth there that they've used, linen. And also you can see here very clearly the amulets lying on the front um, of the body. Uh, the ones which are purple here are made of metal, the others are made of glazed material or stone. And as the body becomes transparent you can see that there are objects inside the chest as well. These brown coloured features and we know from other mummies that these are little wax figures of the gods which were put there to protect the internal organs. She's also got artificial eyes to give her the power to see in the next life. You can also see here the metal coverings of her fingernails and also her toenails. Silver and gold coverings were meant to be placed on exactly these parts of the body. We've been able to see them in great detail because of the dual energy CT scanner. Well, on some of the amulets you can see the individual wings, the feathers. One thing that we really want to do, communicate to the visitors, was the excitement the curators had themselves while discovering the scans and discovering the information. And so hopefully we've captured that in the form of the interactivity. Looking at these raw data, it was very difficult to identify between which was flesh, which was bone, which was skin, and then which were artificial objects inside the body. This exhibition blows that apart. You literally look at the mummies themselves and you're able to peel away all their layers and identify the amazing discoveries that the curators have found. The faces have been preserved so clearly, the lips, the nose and the eyelids of Chai Seti Amu, the young woman, and the hair, the veil that she was wrapped in. And these are people that you can recognise as you walk around the show. There were three that hadn't been scanned, but they'd been x-rayed in the 1960s. So we had the idea there might be something inside. Uh, one of the risks with starting a show like this is that you'll scan a mummy and there'll be nothing to talk about. But everybody that we scanned for the exhibition had some story to tell. I think as we've looked at these data sets, these people have become more real to us as individuals. We're starting to put together life stories for these people. Now we can work out how old they were when they died. We can begin to see what kind of illnesses they were suffering from. One of the things that that tells you is that many ancient Egyptians lived with constant pain and discomfort. Um, and yet, of course, they achieved remarkable things. Uh, the artistic and literary achievements of the ancient Egyptians are being created by people who are suffering from terrible toothache and other bodily ailments. What's been very, very exciting is being able to see the faces of some of these mummies for the first time, and really see their humanity, providing a glimpse into who they may have been, a deeper understanding of what it may have been like to, to live and die in the Nile Valley.